This morning we're going to look at three ways to respond to the Lord's call in your life. Three ways to respond to the Lord's call in your life. We sometimes ask ourselves, what does God want for me in life? What does he want for me? And when we ask this question, we sometimes are thinking of certain things, right? We sometimes are thinking, well, what does God want, God want for me in terms of a job? What does he want for me in terms of where I'm going to live? What does he want for me with people I'm going to meet in life? And yet we remember that the Lord doesn't reveal all of these things to us far in advance. He doesn't reveal these things to us far in advance because they're part of his secret providence. And sometimes when we're tempted to get stuck on some of those questions, we have to step back and ask a different question, a question that will help us to get moving in the right direction with the Lord's help. So we can ask this question, how should I respond to the Lord's call upon my life? How should I respond to his call upon me? And suddenly we can think of some things that help us to find clarity. Well, here are three ways to respond to the Lord's call in your life from this passage in Matthew to help, to help get your mind and your heart going in the right direction for your encouragement and for blessing. Because God cares about you deeply just where you're at right now. He cares about you. He loves you. And he wants you to go in that, that direction that's going to result in encouragement and blessing for you in life. So the first thing is to worship Jesus. To worship Jesus. And this is interesting because back in verse 10, Matthew wrote this. He, he said, Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. So Jesus told that to the ladies who, uh, who he saw after he rose from the dead. He told them, Go and tell my brethren to go and meet me in Galilee. So that's very interesting that he said that because... It was quite a long journey to do that. Well, it says in the passage we read this morning that some were doubtful, but the disciples went to Galilee and they worshipped Jesus. It was important that they worship him. He is God. He is due our worship. They had seen Jesus' compassion many times. They had seen Jesus' miracles as they were with him for three years before his death. And now they saw him risen to life. I think that some were still doubtful because of their misconceptions about the Lord. They had different expectations from what the Lord wanted for them in life. They were focused on having positions of power and prestige. Things hadn't really worked out as they had planned. They certainly thought Jesus would meet them in Jerusalem and that there he would rule and reign over the earth, and that they would be kings sitting on thrones on the earth. But Jesus had something different for them. He wanted them to go to Galilee, about 120 miles away from where they were. And they didn't have cars back then, so they had to walk. And it would have taken probably about four days to go there. But they did, and they came and they worship Jesus. The Gospel of Matthew is very interesting because it begins with other people traveling a very long way to worship Jesus. The Magi, who came from the East. They may have come from Persia, which is modern-day Iran, and they came and traveled a long, long distance. And when they saw Jesus, they bowed down and they worshiped him. And now at the end of the book of Matthew, the disciples are traveling to Galilee, and they worship him. They worship the Lord. Worship Jesus in your life. Worship Jesus in your life. Worship him. Bow down before him. Things may not have worked out exactly like you had wanted in your life. Maybe they didn't work out like you had thought. But you've seen Jesus' compassion just like the disciples. You've seen him work in your life. You've seen him work in the lives of other people you know. As imperfect as everyone is, you know that your life and others' lives have been touched by Jesus' deep mercy. He's provided you with forgiveness for all of your sins through his death on the cross. He took each and every one, and he received your punishment and rose again from the dead. 
And he gives you that wonderful promise of John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. You have eternal life. Worship him. Worship him. He's provided you good things in your life. Just as the Magi worshipped, just as the disciples worshipped, come and worship the Lord. And as you're able, come and gather together with us on Sunday mornings. He's provided other people in your life to bless you and to help you. And he's provided you for other people to bless and encourage them. You're very important, and what you do is very important too. Come to the Lord and worship him. So three ways to respond to the Lord's call in your life. The first is to worship Jesus. The second thing is to encourage others to trust Jesus. Encourage others to trust him, to follow him in their lives. Jesus said that he had all authority in heaven and on earth. All authority he had. And the things he said to do, he asked them to encourage others to follow him, to make disciples of all the nations, to baptize them, to bless them with water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus asked. And to observe his commands that would be good for them, his way of living, his teachings. That's what Jesus asked them to do. The Lord could have asked the apostles to do many other things, many other things that we might think would be pretty important sometimes. But look what he asked them to do. He has all authority in heaven and on earth, and this is what he asked them to do, these things. To encourage others to trust Jesus and to follow him in their lives. Now, I know that the Lord's called us to do different things in life, in terms of our job and other matters. But no matter what the Lord has called you to do in your life today, these things that he says here play a part of it too. He wants you to encourage others in your life, in your sphere of influence, to trust and follow Jesus. Encourage others to trust in Jesus. Encourage them. We sometimes think there's always going to be enough time for other people to come and see Jesus and learn from him in their lives. But time is short. We need to make the most of every opportunity, the Bible says. I posted a picture from our service last Sunday with our flower cross of Penny and Katie and a friend from work had commented she said I remember when Katie was just born Katie was so little now she's grown up time goes by so quick ten years goes by so fast before you know it it's past say a good word to someone in your life about Jesus talk about the Lord's blessings in your life if you see that they need help in a certain way, direct them to find help from the Lord. I know that people sometimes disparage the Lord and his commands. Defend the Lord's goodness. Defend the goodness of his commands. Talk about how what he says is good for us. It's not bad. It helps us in our lives. Get used to talking about how Jesus forgives us because he died for us and rose again. And encourage others to know that kindness and love. I know other people are busy in their lives with different things. Encourage them to see Jesus. Take the time to text them something about the Lord, to say something positive to them about the Lord, or to send them a card. Encourage others to trust in Jesus. Encourage others to trust in Jesus. Three ways to respond to the Lord's call in your life. The first thing is to worship Jesus. The second thing, encourage others to trust in Jesus. And the third thing from this passage is, know that Jesus is with you. Know that Jesus is with you in your life. In verse 20, he said, Lo, I am with you always. I'm always with you, he said, even to the end of the age. He said he'd be with them always. And the Lord is with you always in your life. Jesus had proven his identity to the disciples again and again with his miracles and through his wonderful teaching. And yet some of them still had this disappointment in their hearts. They thought things would work out differently. The Lord did give them at that time the type of positions of power that they had wanted. And they had some disappointment. And here it says that some were still doubtful. 
Some were still doubtful. And yet Jesus knew that they needed to grow. And he wanted them to go in the right direction, to grow, and to change some of their expectations in light of who he is and what he did for them. And he wanted his disciples to know that they needed to trust him and that he would be with them always, even to the end of the age. No matter what happened, even to the end of the age, he said he would be with them. He would always be by their side. He would always be in their hearts. He would always be at the Father's right hand for them. And even if they couldn't see him because he was going to ascend back up into heaven, he would always be with them. Know that Jesus is with you in your life. No matter what you're going through, the Lord is with you. Things may not have worked out just the way that you wanted with something in your life. Maybe some of the most important people in your life let you down in some way that hurt very badly. Know that Jesus always cares for you. Know that he's always with you. Know that you can trust him. You can find comfort and encouragement from him. He will go with you forward. Trust him. Know that he always loves you. Know that he's your savior. Know that he's your shepherd and friend and guide. Know that he leads you through the valley of the shadow of death. In death's dark veil, I'll fear, fear no ill. With thee, dear Lord, beside me, that we sing today. Thy cross and staff, my comfort still. Thy rod and staff, my comfort still. Thy cross before to guide me. Know the Lord will guide you. Know that he's with you. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And when all is said and done, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give him those expectations that you have. Give him your disappointments. Give him all of those frustrations that weigh heavy on your heart and mind. Give them to him. He's a faithful savior and shepherd of you. He cares about you more than you can even fathom. He knows what you're going through right now and he loves you deeply. He's committed to your care. He's taken you up in his arms with nail-pierced hands of forgiveness. He rejoices over you. You're a trophy of his compassion and grace. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So know the Lord's call on your life this morning. Know his call. Worship Jesus and be intentional about worshiping him in private and with others. Worship him, he's so worthy. Like the Magi, bow before him. Like the disciples when they saw him risen again, worship him. Encourage others to trust Jesus. Time is so short. Encourage them, say a good word to them. Encourage them to look to him as their savior, as their shepherd, as their friend. And know that Jesus is with you. No matter how disappointed you feel about something in this life, let the Lord encourage you. Give him the bitterness the expectations, any frustration and resentment. Ask him to give you a deep sense that he accepts you, that will help you and get you through that time. And as you and I do these things, our minds will get unstuck. We're not gonna be stuck on some of the things that maybe God hasn't revealed to us, but we're gonna go in that direction of goodness in our lives. We're gonna find encouragement and be built up in order to go forward in our lives. We're gonna be able to move in that direction and do those things that God's planned for us that are going to be a blessing for us. And you're going to bless other people too. And the Lord is going to use this to build you up a deep foundation of his kindness to you in your life.